In this video, we're going to take a look at the steps involved in rendering out a multi-channel EXR using Octane for Maya. And I'm using the machinery O2.MA scene for this example. So I've set this up. We have our environment object here. If you take a look at the render settings, I have created a render passes node. It's just called Octane Passes 1. And if we take a look at the options, I've chosen just a few render passes kind of at random. So diffuse indirect, reflection indirect, uh, light direction, and I think ambient occlusion. If you take a look at the preview pass, if I set this to say uh, diffuse indirect, you can see there's the render pass. So the idea here, I want all these render passes to be included in a single image rendered from Maya as a separate channel in a multi-channel EXR image. So once I've got my passes set up and I can choose as many as I like, just be aware it will increase the size of the image that's stored on disk, but I've chosen all the render passes that I want. I'm going to switch over to viewport 2.0 just because if you're going to do a batch render, you want to make sure that you don't have octane rendering in the viewport or in the IPR window. You want to make sure that those are all turned off before you start the batch render. So I've created my passes node. I want to make sure I have the right kernel and uh, camera, etc. All the other settings that are related to image quality. And then I'll go to the common tab and choose EXR for my image format and turn on save composite EXR file. I can choose compression or no compression and I can choose to have 32 bit or 16 bit. So I'll choose 32 bit float for the highest image quality. I've noticed that uh, I have better luck even if I'm going to render out just a single frame, I'll set this to name number extension. And then down here in the frame range, I'll just set the start and end frame to the individual frame that I want to render. And of course, if you're rendering out an animated sequence, then you can just choose the start and end frame that's appropriate for your sequence. But this seems to work better when rendering a single frame than say choosing just name extension single frame. Sometimes that does not render anything out. So that's a better way to go. Uh, so once you're ready to go, I always like to turn on verbose mode right here so I can see what's going on in the script editor as it's rendering. So you can see I have some previous renders right here and it kind of shows the percentage while it's rendering and where the image is being stored. So I like that. And once I have that set up, you can just choose render, uh, batch render, and it will start rendering. Then once it's completed, you can take your image, your EXR image into a compositing program such as Nuke or After Effects. I have Nuke right here. Um, and this is the image. If I go up here, I can take a look at what those uh, render passes look like. I have my ambient occlusion, diffuse indirect, uh, light direction, reflection, shading normals, and so on. And it's all contained within a single 32-bit image here in Nuke. So that's how you render out a multi-channel EXR using Octane Premium.